And so my legend begins. So when talking about how to play the early and mid game, it's very important how you play and what you do. Um, because in my opinion, it can cause the biggest impact on the on whether you win or lose a game, how you play in the early to mid game. Um, if you're doing well in laning stage, you can snowball and just end out a game and have a stomp. Or even if you lost lanes, if you play the early and mid game well enough, you can shut down the enemies that are snowballing and give yourself a chance to get back into the game. So I'm going to quickly go over some of the basic ideas you should be thinking about and what objectives you should be uh, looking for when getting into the early and mid game. So the main objectives you're going to want to be thinking about is going to be taking the opponent's mid tower, taking the opponent's safe lane tower, and then defending your mid tower. The reason uh, contesting the mid towers are so important is because the mid tower acts as like an anchor for, for accessing all parts of the map for each team. It's the closest point to like everywhere on the map that you can TP to. Um, so you can like smoke anywhere from the mid tower. It's just a very strong central location that you want to defend and take away from the enemy if you can. Now next, the reason you want to take the opponent's safe lane tower is because that really opens up the map for your safe lane to farm, uh, for your safe laner to farm, as well as just opens up the map for you guys to start pressuring more. Now notice how I didn't say defending your safe lane tower. That's because oftentimes I think taking a big team fight to defend your safe lane tower is often a bad idea. A concept I really like to follow when playing games is taking fights next to objectives you want to take. And because of the way that the Dota map is set up, taking the opponent's safe lane tower is very important, but taking their off lane tower is not very important. Now the reasoning for this is because once you take the opponent's safe lane tower, it pretty much cuts off this portion of the map uh, from being contested. They have no way to get there besides TPing to like their tier 2, the shrine, or their tier 1 mid. They have no other way to get to this location, so taking the enemy's safe lane tower will pretty much give you this whole portion of the map for you guys to farm and pressure. Um, on the other hand, if you try and take their uh, off lane tower, it doesn't really give you any map control, right? Because they can still TP and come to their triangle through these three towers. The only place it really cuts off is going to be like the secret shop area, which doesn't do anything for you. So. Hopefully you can kind of see here how taking this tower isolates this part of the map, but taking this tower doesn't really isolate anything for you guys. Um, so the concept that I, I was talking about, I like to take team fights next to objectives that I want to take. And because of how the Dota map is kind of like inverted on each side, the objective that we want to take is going to be the safe lane tower. And the objective that the enemy team wants to take is going to be also the safe lane tower on the other side of the map. So if we take team fights, uh, if we're radiant, and we take team fights on the top half of the map to try and take the opponent's safe lane tower, even if we lose that fight and they take a tower, the opponents are going to take our off lane tower, which, like same thing I said for Dire, it's not going to give them anything. So if we take a fight top and we lose and they take our off lane tower, we're only going to lose a tiny part of map control that is very negligible, right? And so on the other hand, if we take a team fight bottom to defend our safe lane tower, and we win, we're going to get this useless tower here. But if we lose, then we're going to give them a very important tower and we're going to lose all of our map control on this side. So taking team fights next to objectives that you want to take and away from objectives that the enemy team wants to take is a very good way of kind of stopping losses if you lose, right? So you're setting yourself up. So even if you lose the fight, you're not going to lose any important objectives. So Dictating where you take fights and taking fights in good spots is a huge way to improve and, and gain MMR. Because like I said, even if you lose the fight, you're not going to like lose any map control or lose anything. So now that you guys have like a basic understanding of what your main objectives are going into the early and into the mid game, uh, let's talk about what you need to be thinking about in order to achieve those objectives, as well as just kind of putting some gameplay behind uh, uh, the ideas that I talked about. So in this game, uh, just the way it ended up, I'm already around mid this time. Uh, we just killed the Skyrath and then my, I think my Ember died also. So I'm mid at the eight minute mark, so I'm just gonna help with the rune. And at this point, I would say it kind of moves into the, the mid game because I'm pretty much leaving my lane and I'm just kind of playing with my strong characters, uh, which brings me to my next point. Uh, you, when you're playing Earth Spirit, you need to identify who on your team is strong and who you enable to kill as well as who on the other team you are actually able to kill. So with uh, me and Ember, I know 
together, we can easily kill their mid Skyrath whenever we want. So I'm going to play with him and do that. As well as bottom, I know that this Klinks is a free kill with me and either Ember or Wind Ranger. And so the way that this game kind of worked out, my Wind Ranger is kind of just going to be sitting bottom farming, pushing out the wave, slowly trying to take the tower. And my Ember is going to be the one who's going to be making more moves around the map. So I'm going to be pretty much bouncing back and forth between mid and bottom, just looking to connect with my cores and find kills. And so in doing that, I'm going to have vision in their jungle, um, trying to make sure I D ward if I, I know that they put any vision in the jungle and just kind of looking for isolated heroes um, that I can take advantageous fights with my, my cores. I'm going to pop a smoke just so I can uh, try and avoid any wards. I don't know what they have. I'm going to try and put down some vision as well. Uh, that's a very good play you can do is, is smoking to get some nice deep wards that the other team won't, won't suspect. Um, and like, like I said, let me. I want to re-alliterate re on that. The main point that, that these wards are for is to help you see isolated heroes on the other team. See when they split up on the other team so you can take like two on one fights or three on two fights or just like free kills when the, the enemy team splits up. So I'm gonna put down the sentry there, make sure there's no ward. Looking about warding, but I see the clinks and we're just gonna quickly kill this guy. And then I'm gonna go ward. Uh, as I see, there's uh, some fighting happening mid, four enemy heroes TP in mid, and they kill my Ember, and they're going to go push the mid tower here. So I know they use a lot of spells here, so I'm, I want to fight them now. Uh, I hope, I'm going to hopefully wait for my Ember to respawn. Uh, maybe my Ursa and Wind Ranger can TP in, um, and hopefully we can defend the tower ideally, but they end up killing the tower faster than my teammates can respawn, but we're able to take a good fight, which turns into us taking their mid tower as well. So I want to talk about my thought process when going into this fight on four heroes. <clears throat> so I'm going to be initiating this fight, and I know looking at their heroes, the Skywrath has an instant silence, and that's like their only disable. And uh, that's the only thing that stops me from being able to use my spells. So immediately I know I have to silence the Skywrath before I do anything. Before I press my ult, before I slow, before anything, I need to silence him. So as I roll in, I'm immediately going to silence the Skywrath, and then I'm going to press my ult and slow everybody else. Get the silence off, then I drop my ult slow, and then that allows for my Ursa to TP in and uh, clean up the Undying. And then my Embers fina finally able to catch up, and they're going to clean up everyone else. And then we're able to take the mid tower in return. And then I know my next objective is going to be bottom, so we kill this tower. Immediately going to start running bottom. See the clinks there out of position, and we're going to try and pick up a kill on this guy. So, at this point in the game, uh, on Earth Spirit, and especially with the team I have with like a, an offlane Wind Ranger, I'm the tankiest guy on my team right now, and uh, the enemy team doesn't really have enough damage to just burst me. So I'm kind of positioning myself in between everybody, so it kind of helps my, my Wind Ranger set up her spells, and, and Ursa and, and Ember kind of pick and choose which targets they want to go on. And that's not always the case, you know, sometimes... As the game gets later on and they have damage to absolutely just like one hit you then you have to be more conservative with your positioning and let your other teammates kind of um like tank like if you have an axe or something then you let them be in front so you can pick and choose which targets you need to go on so i stand in front help set up a shackle on this guy um but then the fight doesn't end up going so well but because of where we took the fight very far up in their jungle, they're not able to like transition that into taking any map control. The only thing that this fight kind of does for them, they don't even D ward, so it doesn't even work. But the only thing this fight could do for them is to take away the map control that we already took from them. But they're not gonna make, they're not like gonna come invade our half of the map and take away all our space from our Ursa because so far our Ursa has just been free farming, like our whole jungle, while I've been just camping their jungle, setting up kills with my cores. So they're not able to take any map control from our Ursa because of where we're taking these fights at. We just killed this tower and we have vision of the only places that heroes can come from. So this is kind of looking like a good fight for us to, to try and take. So immediately go on the Sklinks, quickly kill him. And already just killing the Sklinks, we're happy. We got the tower, we killed their carry while our carry is just free farming. So no matter what else happens here, we're already happy with it. They use back mole on me. 
I think. Lose a few more. Oh, just barely didn't kill that guy. So, so we so we killed their mid and their carry, while our hard carry just free farms, and we got the bot tower. So overall, we're really happy with this. So now what happens in games like this, where then both mid towers and both safe lane towers die really early on, it can make the game like really stagnate because neither team is strong enough to like take any other objectives. We can't really take any tier twos. Um, we can't really Roche unless we take like a really good fight, and uh, maybe Ursa can take it. But even this early respawn times are so short, it's really hard to to even take Roche unless he can sneak it. So the game really stagnates. So all that we can really do is set up in their jungle and look for pickoffs. Um, same thing with these deep wards. It helps us kind of find isolated heroes, and ideally we want to take fights like three on two. Two on one. There's free kills that aren't really like big team fights. Um, while our Ursa and uh, Ember can get strong enough to take the objectives. So we see this uh, this clinks alone, and we just go on this guy. So an another point I want to make: spell casting, like in these situations, don't really matter so much on our spirit. It's pretty much the same every time. But once you get into like more of the team fights, that's when you really need to be thinking about who you're using your spells on. Like even like this clinks kill right here, even if say this was, because uh, I'm gonna talk about this in the next fight. Even if this was like an undying right here, you're just gonna pretty much use all your spells on them. You're gonna roll when the roll ends. You're gonna silence him, slow him, and just kill the guy if it's just a pick off. But when you get into more team fights and multiple heroes, you need to really think about who you're using your spells on and like why you're using the spell on them, so you can like um, be as effective as possible. So like I said, all I need to do right now is kind of just set up and look for heroes that are, are out of position and uh, find free kills with my, my cores. So we already have like solidified map control bottom. This word, pretty much this high ground here, we can control all this part of the map and we're just kind of chilling. And we're just pushing out mid and my um, Chen is doing a good job pressuring this tower. So we have like crazy map control right now. We have like three fourths of the map and we're not really strong enough to go invade the triangle. So we're just kind of chilling for them until they come out of position and come into our map control where we can take a good fight. So I'm just gonna sit here for like a minute. I'm just waiting for uh, somebody to go on. So we see them come with the side run. And so here's what I was talking about before. So I see this uh, Undying here, but I'm not gonna use any spells on him. Cause in my head, I know the only people I need to worry about right now is this uh, Skywrath and the, the Warlock ult. So I'm not gonna waste any spells on this guy. I'm just gonna wait for these people to come in that I know I need to use my spells on, or if I can roll and initiate onto them. So I'm just kind of hitting this guy. I'm gonna vessel him up. And then also another thing I'm thinking about, I already know where they're gonna come from. Because I was set up bottom here and I had this ward, and my teammates are pushing in here. I know they're probably not gonna come from this way unless they TP in, but I don't think they will just because we saw the heroes here. And it'd be odd for them to be here and then just TP to come in this way. So I'm already thinking that the witch, the the warlock and whoever else is probably gonna come up this high ground or be on this high ground over here. So I'm already ready for this this warlock to come up so I can silence him before he can get his ult off. So this guy blinks with the back wall, but I immediately silence the warlock. And then I'm going to wait for my silence to end before I roll on him again. Just to um, maximize the uptime of my disables. Cancel his ult. And then my team uh, decides to disengage. And I'm just going to finish off the kill on the, the Warlock. So, as you can see, I'm very cognitive of who I'm using my spells on. Like, I'm not just rolling on the Undying when I see him. And just randomly silencing him. I'm thinking about who I need to use my spells on and I'm waiting for them to show up so I can go on them and, and do that. So I pick up the kill on that guy, my team disengages, and then um, that's that fight. So same thing as before, the game is really stagnant right now because we're not strong enough to take any objectives. So I'm just going to run back bottom. So notice now how I didn't use my TP after this fight, especially in stagnant games like this you need to have your tp for whatever to happen so i'm just going to run bottom so that way i can tp anywhere on the map if a fight happens which is 
huge. You'll gain a thousand and more if you don't TP. Save your TP so you can TP to fights. That's huge. It lets you it lets you be way more greedy if you have a TP, right? So I can go push out a wave away from my team if I have a TP so I can come help if there's a fight anywhere else. Um, so that pretty much ends like the early mid game just because the way it'll work out is the game will stagnate until we get strong enough to take more objectives and then it'll kind of transition into the late game. So uh, that'll be all for this replay.